So how do you get to heaven? By obeying or by believing just by faith? Or is it both? Well, what does the scripture say? We always want to go to what scripture says, the 66 books of the Bible, right? Written by 40 different authors over a span of over 1,500 years, almost 2,000 years. But it's all God's word because the Bible says it is, and I believe it is, and I've seen it work in my own life, and I know it'll work in your life too. But we're going to look at that in Romans chapter 4. What does it say about faith? Is it is it by faith alone? Is that how you're saved? Or is it by obeying? We're going to find out. Okay, here we are, guys. Romans chapter 4. For the promise to Abraham... Or to his descendants, that's anyone who believes, right? The, the people who are saved, that he would be the heir of the world was not through the law. So it wasn't through the law of Moses. It wasn't through obeying God's commandments as much as it was this, but through the righteousness of faith, through the righteousness of faith. That's why some people say like by faith alone, by grace alone that you're saved. It's it's a combination. I mean, you're, the results of, of faith, of believing and trusting in God is that you will have good works. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to mess up, but you're going to have good works in your life overall. All right. So let's go to verse 14 here. It says, for the, if those who are of the law are heir, heirs and then faith is made void and the promise is nullified. In other words, the promise is no good to Abraham. So let's read that again. For if those who are of the law are the heirs, right? The inheritance, they, they get the inheritance of what God's talking about with Abraham. Then faith is made void and the promise is nullified. For if the law brings about wrath, okay? For the law does bring about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no violation. Wow. Wow. That sounds like freedom, freedom from rules and regulations in, in the law. It is. And that's what God, that's what Jesus, that's why he came, you guys. It is so beautiful because he wanted to free us from that because only he, only Yeshua, Jesus, could fulfill, completely fulfill the law. That's why this scripture is so, so important. All right, let's move on to verse 16 of Romans chapter 4. This is an amazing chapter, by the way, you guys. For this reason, it is by faith. So he's just bringing it up over and over. He's pounding it at home, you guys. He's, he's hitting this home run over and over and over, telling you it is by faith. For this reason, it is by faith in order that it might be in accordance with grace. Getting something good you don't deserve, right? Grace. So that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. The father of who? Those who are going to heaven, those who have faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's who, you guys. It's real simple. And Jesus even said that before Abraham was, I am. And he even said that Abraham saw my day. <laughs> he, he, he knew Abraham before Abraham was, you guys. So he's definitely the Son of God. There's no doubt about that. So let's go to verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, that is God, who gives life to the dead, calls into being things that do not exist. Remember Jesus in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He's speaking about Jesus, calling him the Word. And that's actually Logos, Logos in uh, the Greek. And this was like the God that was like, who keeps everything together in the universe, and uh, and it was and he was the word logos. Remember, you know, you guys probably know that logo, logos is word. So it's amazing how John or God had him do that, tied it all together right there. But here it says, "Who gives life to the dead?" Jesus gave life to the dead when he walked on this earth. Lazarus, right, and the little girl who died. 
And he calls to being things that do not exist. He did that. And he's creating a place right now, you guys. He's creating a home for us who put our faith and our trust in him. In Jesus, he's creating a beautiful place for us forever. (laughs) Isn't that exciting? All right, so let's move on to verse 18. In hope against hope, he believed, talking about Abraham, so that he might become a father of many nations according to that which has been spoken. So shall your descendants be, God said to Abraham. So beautiful. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body now as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old. And God's promising that he's going to have a son. He's about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. She wasn't too far behind him in her 90s, probably. And, you know, they were both extremely old. Can you imagine a couple that old today having a child? And just believing it, everyone's probably mocking them, like, you know, like, whatever, you're not going to have a kid. And they have the son of the promise, which is what Isaac's name means. Actually, it means laughter, but he was the son of the promise. All right, let's go to 20, verse 20. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Oh, isn't that good? Strong in faith. When people are strong in their faith, what do they do? They give glory to God, not to themselves. And then verse 21, and being fully assured that what God promised he was able to perform, he believed it. He believed that God was able to perform this promise about having a son, the son of the promise. Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. So he was righteous. Abraham was righteous because he believed and he trusted God. Trust is huge, you guys. Trust him, believe him and trust him. That's that's what he's asking for. And that'll help you to obey. When you believe and trust God, you will end up obeying too. Not all the time, but most of the time. And now, not as uh, not for his sake only, but was this all written, right? But that it was credited to him, but for our sake also, for you and for me, to whom it will be credited, Our credit is righteous too when we have faith and believe and trust in God through Jesus Christ. To us who believe in him who raised Jesus, that would be the Father who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. And he who has, or excuse me, he who was delivered over because of our wrongdoings and was raised because of our justification. So he made us justified. He clothed us in his righteousness when he died on the cross and when he rose again that promise was no was was certified it was stamped approved that we you and i if we believe in jesus we are clothed in his righteous when the father sees you and father sees me he sees the righteousness of jesus the same standing that he has before the father as far as righteousness goes we have that too It's amazing. That's grace. That's getting something good you don't deserve, my friend. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's what God did here. I just love this, don't you? All right. Well, God bless you guys. Hey, don't forget, check out this uh, playlist in Romans. I'm doing a a whole series on it right now. And uh, I know you'll be blessed by it. So, all right. Talk to you later. 